Welcome to Keep Canada Weird Remembers, a series that revisits strange times in Canada's strange past. Okay, Jordan, the time machine's a convertible, so let's take the top down and feel the winds of time through our hair on this one. Take me somewhere that just makes that happen. Okay, well, I'll take you somewhere where you don't need to feel the winds of time through your hair. You're going to be able to see how your hair is affected by the winds of time. Okay. It'll make more sense as we get going. <laughs> We're going to head back to 1988, the wonderful city of Montreal, Quebec. Uh, and we're going to be looking at a story that takes place on the very cutting edge of technology. Now, again, we're going back to 88, but we're talking today in the present day in 2023. Uh, before we get into the story, let's think about a few ways our lives have been changed by technology, specifically the prevalence of home computers and smartphones. There's many jobs that are obsolete, things we did to pass our time, things we obsessed over and revolved our lives around as children. Some of them don't even exist anymore. So let me go with the first one. A big change in our lives since the 80s is that video rental stores don't exist anymore. That was the place I spent mm -hmm. so much time. They're virtually gone now, thanks to streaming services. That's right, yeah, it was a, it was a big, friday night activity to go out to the movie store and and pick a pick a movie out and pick some snacks and go home and watch a movie that you ended up hating and screaming at your sister yeah exactly it was a wonderful time so that doesn't exist anymore you tell me Aaron, a way that technology has changed our lives well back you know in the 80s and 90s um the 70s whatever time frame you used to have to to meet your future significant other in a grocery store. Mm, like a creep, right? You just go up to them? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, you reach for the same, you know, carton of milk and your hands touch. And and back then, you know, they wouldn't call security on you. Now they would. So so you don't go there to meet people anymore. But now you go on your phone, you have an app. You sign up, you open it up, you upload a couple of photos. Next thing you know, you're connecting with as many people as you want to drink milk with. <laughs> yeah, that is a change. But here's another thing. Uh, the, the story we're going to hear is, is the change actually happening. Because pre-1988, if you wanted to change your hairstyle, maybe you wanted to dye it or maybe you wanted to get it cut short or something, you had to like close your eyes and imagine what your face would look like with this new haircut. Would it look appropriate on my head? Well, this one barber shop in Montreal in 1988, they had a groundbreaking technology where they could take a photograph of you of your face, they could use an electronic pen, which we now call, I guess, a mouse, and they could get that image into a computer and show you on screen your face, and they could overlay different haircuts in this kind of rudimentary preview of what these various haircuts may look on, like on your head. And of course, yeah. this, this technology, it was big news. The news it's covered- really, It's really the first Snapchat filter basically yeah yeah let's listen to how the news covered how the press covered it because it was big news at the time everyone wants to look good but when it comes to changing a hairstyle you've sported and loved for too long many people are not willing to take the risk but now there's a way around that a computer that shows you what you will look like with that new hairdo without touching a hair on your head it's the only one of its kind in montreal and this is the east end beauty salon that's using it you're less afraid to, to talk with the hairdresser after because sometimes you want to change, but you're always scared. At the touch of an electronic pen, you can experiment with different styles and colors. Yes, I could curl it or if you want to try some color in your hair. It costs $40 for a one-hour session with a consultant. There are hundreds of styles to choose from for both men and women. A picture is taken before and after. If it's not the look you want, experiment with a few more. So just how accurate is this? Okay, it's accurate about 95 persons. This beauty salon has been using the computer for five months now. So far, it has seen more than 1,000 customers. Hairdressers here say it is so successful, they're even looking into expanding the concept and eventually setting up a computer system that will help you coordinate fashion with different hairstyles and color. What do they say the price was? Per hour, it was like sixty bucks an hour. Did you? Uh, I can't remember. Um, I was too distracted by 
the the news anchor, like the reporter, uh, didn't have an accent unless she said the word salon. So she'd be like, she'd have a regular voice, and then she'd go, salon. And this is the East End Beauty Salon that's using it. <laughs> it, it was interesting to get a kind of a glimpse back in time like that. I think, uh, I, I guess that would be... I don't know. Would you even use that service today? I still feel like if I was getting a weird hairstyle, I wouldn't, or changing my hairstyle or something. I still don't know if I'd need to see it on my face. No, well, that came out like that's a that's the late '80s. So they're they're thinking we're introducing this brand new technology into all salons all over the world. You know, this is going to catch on like wildfire. But I never saw anywhere that used that. So no. this this looks like they invented it. They roll it out and nobody adopted it. Yeah, because I recall like you go to get a haircut, there'd be a book, like a magazine. You'd flip through it with all the different hairstyles. You're like, I want that one. You know, you could do that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. They had the magazine. Yeah, and it would be all of these fit, attractive people with these hairstyles. And I want to look like that. And then they cut your hair and you walk out uglier, <laughs> uglier than you walked in. <laughs> uh, this at this time, and it wasn't cheap at this time in 1988, that was about $40 an hour to sit with someone and see your face with these different overlays of the different haircuts that translates to just about $75 an hour today. So it's not cheap to do that. Yeah, it's it's a time consuming process, especially with the technology being like right now, you just hold a, a phone up to somebody's face and you can have anything transposed onto them to, mm -hmm. to, to make them look like whatever you want instantly. So, but in this situation, you have this very new crude technology that makes everybody look like a maniac when you watch the video. Yeah, but, it, it, it certainly does. It looks like. So they had to take a picture beforehand and then run it through this thing and then sit there and flipping through hairstyles like that would take that would take an hour in itself before you even get to cutting the hair. <laughs> It would just be an awkward experience, like, because I, I, I feel like since it was cutting edge technology, every time they like bring it up on the screen, like there's probably this reaction of like, oh wow, like how does that work? How can you do that? Because it's such a, like a new idea at the time, and it doesn't <laughs> give a, an accurate representation anyway, because it's the resolution so low and poor. Oh yeah, every every image of that of it that I saw uh, for in the news clip just looks ridiculous. No, nobody looked good. Everybody looked insane in, mm -hmm. in, in all of the different options that they were scrolling through. It was mm -hmm. just really bad. And 95% of the time, he said it was accurate. 95% of the time. Yeah, what does he like, mean? Where's that? that number coming from? Yeah, and it's accurate? Well, how can it not be accurate? He should have been like, what do you mean like accurate? Like your picture's there and we have a picture of hair that we like lay over your face. So like. And imagine you're going into do it to a salon and you're going to get your hair cut. And this is a haircut that you're going to have for months so you're gonna rock this thing for months of your life that's a long time and so this guy is telling you to come into my salon and there's a five percent chance that you're gonna hate how you look for the next six months well not even that it's there's a five percent chance that it's not going to look the way you're paying us 75 dollars an hour to see it yeah it's, it's it's very complicated and once it's done like once the hair is done and it's cut and like say you know you had longer hair you put a you 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 put a shorter haircut onto the screen it's like okay let's go with that and then they cut it and then it's like it doesn't look like how it was supposed to look how it did on the screen like oh well you know like there's nothing you can do about that there's no mm. going back at that mm. point like he said like, oh well, we just try different ones it's like no 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 the hair is gone <laughs> and you it's also gone, can't yeah. like go on social media and like complain or give them a bad review. You could do nothing. No. You're defenseless. You're completely defenseless. Where nowadays the 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 smallest slight against you, you can always like go on Twitter and like tell people or put it on mm -hmm. or put it on Facebook. That's my favorite threat. Like I'm going on social media about this. Yeah. And I say that as someone who often goes online and complains about companies. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I love that's it. why I got that's why I got rid of my Facebook. I couldn't listen to you anymore. <laughs> well, Aaron, if you ever see like I don't know if you're at like a used uh, a Goodwill kind of store and you see this old machine that's uh, that uh, was used for this digital hair previews in the '80s, buy one because it would be a lot of fun to mess with. Yes, it would be very fun.
Okay. Well, let's wrap it up with that. If anyone listening has any insight on how this thing worked, if they've ever used it or their parents used it, we'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Or tell us about your worst haircut ever. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'd love to hear about that. Or a time where they m did something wrong in your hair. Like maybe you were supposed to get it shaved like an inch long, but something went wrong and they like s buzzed right down to your skin. You know, I've always had nightmares mm -hmm. of that happening or doing that to myself because I cut my own hair. But if anyone's ever experienced anything like that, I would be interested to hear about it. Absolutely. Let's wrap it up, Aaron. Until next time. Jordan, until next time. The margin of error with haircuts should be zero. It should be perfect every time. And Jordan, until next time, I'm going to talk with my normal voice until I say the word, salam. Keep Canada Weird is written, hosted, and produced by the Nighttime Podcast.